Hi everyone, this side Arohi from Pifer Technologies, IT Park Mohali and in my today's class, I will discuss about Principal Component Analysis, PCA. So, PCA is used to reduce the number of features or you can say columns, right? Means to reduce the number of features or columns from your data set. PCA checks for useless or unwanted columns and then discards them. For example, suppose we are working on a taxi fare prediction problem. Means we want to predict a taxi fare and in our data set, let's suppose we have two columns. In first column, we have, um, you know, distance covered by cab in kilometer and we have another column in our data set where we are calculating the, means where we are covering the distance of a cab in miles. Here, both the columns are focusing on distance only. In one column, we are, you know, uh, talking about distance in kilometers and the other column is having distance in miles. Means, both the columns are focusing on distance only. So, we can say, like in this data set, we have these two columns which are related. If two columns are related, means two columns have similar data, that means variance is less right variance is less simply means there is lot of similarity in these two columns and always remember whenever we want to work on any kind of problem we always need to have those features means we always need to have those column in our data set which have high variance because then only our algorithm will learn from more relevant features right so now over here let's see this first picture this first picture here high variance this first picture is showing high variance high variance means data is spread out more these values are spread out more spread out more spread out means there means these are different different examples there are different different values right so this is high variance and over here in this figure we have low variance low variance means values are very close to each other that means these values are related to each other and our goal is to have the data where variance is high right now let's move to the next uh, figure over here so in this picture if I talk about this figure, so we can simply say like this direction, the direction which is marked by blue line is called principal component because variance is high in this direction. Data is more spread out on this direction. So this will become a principal component. And the second principal component is this, the direction which is marked by green line right means our data is spread out in two direction this is the direction in this direction our data is spread out more and then after that this is the direction where our data is spread out and pca what pca does pca simply means the direction in which data is more spread out we we are trying to find out that in pca right the direction in which data is more spread out and why we are looking for more spread out because more spread out data means high variance, right? So, whenever you want to apply PCA, always perform standardization on your data. Always scale your data. Why? Because PCA is affected by the scale. So, always scale the features of your data set before applying PCA. Right, you can use min-max scalar or standard scalar for that. Over here, you can see the example, the screenshot. See, these are the four features before applying, you know, I want to apply PC on it. And this is the actual data looks like. And as I've told you, PCA is affected by the scale. So, I performed standardization on it. So, this is the standardized data now after standard scalar data looks like this. And on this data, now I'll perform standard, this, sorry, PCA. 
right? Always scale your data uh, if you want to perform PCA on it. And how we calculate variance? Variance, remember, over here we are discussing about variance. Variance means how much data is spread out, right? So, how we calculate, how we can calculate variance? So, the formula for that is standard deviation of a particular column divided by sum of standard deviation of all columns. Suppose if you want to calculate the variance of this column, that means we'll calculate the standard deviation of this column first of all, and then we'll divide it by the standard deviation, sum of deviation of all the columns. This is how we can perform standard, um, you know, find covariance. Now, uh, let's see the example of finding variance using um, this uh, Python. So, first of all, what I'm doing over here is I'm importing standard scalar. Why I'm importing standard scalar? Because as I've told you uh, right now only and whenever you want to apply PCA, just standardize your data, scale your data, right? Then PCA will perform, uh, will give you more good results. So I'm importing standard scalar and then I'm calling this standard scalar in one variable. This is the variable in which I'm calling. And after that, I have a variable with the name of x1 and in this variable, I'm calling this standard scalar dot fit underscore transform fit means i'm fitting my data right which data i want to fit the data which is present in x variable assume there is no x variable i've used it over here so just assume like x is a variable in which i have my data and i want to apply standard scalar on it so i'm just writing fit fit means simply giving data to standard scalar and transform simply means standard scalar will transform the data which is present in x into standard scalared form right now we have performed standard scalar let's perform pca now so i'm calling importing pca right and n components so always remember this we need to give ourselves only like how many principal components we want so over here i'm writing three that means i want three principal components and always remember this principal component this number of components should be less than your features of your data set suppose if you have data set and in that data set you have five features then you should choose this n component less than that why because the role of pca is the working of pca is to reduce the dimensions right and if you have five columns in your data set and you are saying that i want to create five new features then there is no sense to use pca right because that will not reduce the number of columns so always use less number of features over here uh, sorry n components so i'm writing three over here now i have told like i want three principal components now we are giving data fitting data into pca and then pca will transform the result right okay now this line pca dot explained variance ratio ratio so this method explained underscore variance underscore ratio is the method by which we can know like in which particular direction how much spread how much data is there in uh, every particular direction so we have three components that means we'll be having three different value this is the output of this code what this output is saying is that 61 percent of the data belongs to first axis 33 percent data belongs to second direction and four percent data belongs to third direction why we are having these three values because we are saying we want three components right we want three new components on our data set so that's why we are getting this so this is telling us the percentage like how much data is in first direction how much data is lying in second direction and how much data is lying in third direction right like for example this this is first direction suppose 61 percent data is lying in this direction and then 30 percent data is lying in this direction and suppose there is one other direction suppose in this direction four percent data is lying in this direction this is what we are i'm trying to say over here right so let's discuss the maths behind pca see pca concept you know um, uh, this pca concept what this concept is using at backend 
this concept is using eigen vector and eigen value concept eigen vector simply means the direction and the value means the distance vector simply means in this direction eigen vector in this direction this is the distance right and then in this direction this eigen vector is going up to this distance this is the concept of uh, maths behind pca eigen vector in eigen values right so now let's work on the practical example so the data set which i'm using over here is health.csv i'm reading this data set and this data set is very small data set five with five or six records right so this is the data set and in this data set on the basis of ethnicity height and weight we want to know whether the person will survive till 70 or not right so this is why dependent variable and ethnicity height and weight is independent variable so i'm dividing this data set into x and y in x i'm having first three columns and in y i'm having this will survive till 70 column so if you'll see this data set in this data set we have data in alphabetical form yes and no and over here white african asian so now our algorithm machine learning understand numbers only so the task is to convert these alphabets into numbers so for that i'll, I'll be using this label encoding so i performed label encoding on it now the next task is to perform pca so this is the data after label encoding so this is the data which is in x 201 this is like e african asian or white this get converted into numbers this is the column height and this is the column weight right now i want to apply pca on it and what i'm writing over here is n component 2 why i'm writing 2 we cannot write more than 2 because that will make no sense because PCA's task is to reduce their dimension and in our actual data set, we have three columns in X, right? So that's why I'm writing two over here. So when we'll perform PCA on it, so this is the output we'll get. This is the output. Means instead of these three columns of our data set, now we have only two columns where the data is more spread out. So over here, I'm just printing the shape shape of actual x and the shape of x after pca so you'll see before pca we were having three columns and nine rows and after pca as we have written n components is equal to two now we are having two columns and nine rows now let's check variance like uh, explained uh, we'll find out explained underscore variance underscore ratio this will tell us like in, in which particular direction how much data belongs to which particular direction so these are the two values which we are getting now why we are getting two values because we have two components two principal components and over here what we are knowing from this particular answer is that 93 percent of data belongs to first axis from in first direction and five percent data belongs to second direction now what i'm doing is i want to plot this i want to see visually the direction of data so i'm storing these two column the data which we got after pca i'm storing these two columns in data frame and then i'll plot it so this is what i'm doing here pd dot data frame and i want to create data frame on the data which is present in x underscore pca and i want to create these two columns in pca1 column i'll store the data of pca1 and pca2 column i'll store the data which is in second direction so this is the data now let's plot it so pld dot plot i'm plotting df because df is the variable in which i've created data frame right so i'm plotting it and this is the output which i'm getting this is the data this is how uh, it get visualized so you can see that the blue data have high variance but the orange line the results the values are stable from here to here means 93% data lies in this direction and only 5% data lies in this direction. This is how PCA works. See, the task of PCA is only to find out the direction 
in which data is more spread out because more spread out means high variance high variance means if you will give high variance data to your algorithm then algorithm will learn more right so this is what pca is thank you